Father, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are grateful to you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for this opportunity. You have given us, your Father, that we may interact with your word. We are forever grateful to you because you are the one who loves us so much. Thank you for you have exalted your one above your name. We believe that, Father, your one is able to do that which you have promised, your Father. And once your word comes to us, it is going to transform us, it is going to make us wise, it is going to cleanse us and to purify us, your Father. Because the Bible says, your word is the one who is, which is able to give us inheritance together with all who are being sanctified. We receive your word this evening with thanksgiving because you are our master and you are our father. I pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. So I want us to share briefly about this. A few benefits which we get from the word of God. Benefit number one is found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 2. The Bible says, like newborn babes, you should long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation until you, you reach to ultimate fulfillment. So one of the benefits we get in the word of God is, I have said in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, like newborn babes, you should long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to, to salvation. That means until you reach to its ultimate fulfillment. So one of the benefits we get from the word of God is that of growth. You cannot grow in terms of God's matters or in terms of spirit without the word of God. Just like the way a small babe who, who has just been born without the milk that child will not grow. So similarly, those the believers who are in Christ, any person who has believed in God through his son Jesus Christ, then the word of God is the one which will make you and me grow. So that the, the first benefit is that of growth. Benefit number two, we get it in the book of Second Timothy chapter three, verses fifteen. Which says that how from your childhood you have known the sacred writings, Hebrew scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom. So the other one will get wisdom. That leads to salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Surrendering your entire self to him and having absolute confidence in his wisdom, power and goodness. So the first thing we have said it is growth. Second Peter, I mean First Peter 2 2. Second benefit is wisdom. And this wisdom, it is the one which will lead you to salvation. Actually, when you believe in Christ, you are saved. But salvation now, it is something which continues. You cannot say you are saved and then you, you disconnect from the source. So you have to continue getting the word of God so that it gives you wisdom. So that even you know some of the benefit, the benefit which are found in this salvation. So it, the word of God gives somebody wisdom, which leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And by that, of course, you surrender your entire to Him. So that is another benefit. Of course, the other benefit, which is found in in the same book, Second Timothy chapter three, verses. Uh, 16 says, All scripture is God in breath, given by divine inspiration. So the word of God uh, teaches. It is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin. So the word of God make a person to know where you are uh, you are going against your maker. It is also correct, uh, correction of error and restoration to obedience. So, after the word of God has convicted somebody of the error, that person is going through the same word of God, uh, uh, correct and restores to obedience, so that uh, we can return back to our Father. Also, it trains into righteousness. Righteousness has to do to learning 
learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with the, with the personal integrity and the moral courage. So the word of God is the one which trains us in righteousness. That means we learn through the word of God in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with the personal integrity and the moral courage. And apart from that, also verse 17 says, so that a man of God may be complete and proficient. So the word of God makes you complete. It makes somebody complete. person who has believed in God will become complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So once you continue learning the word of God, you become complete. You are qualified. In the other ones, you are qualified. You are equipped to do good work. Any work requires some skill. So the word of God is the one which prepares people for any good work. And the good year has to do with that which God requires. Or that which God has called somebody, somebody to do. In the book of Acts chapter 22. Chapter 20, sorry. Acts chapter 20. Verses. Verses 32. Acts chapter 20 verses 32. We get another benefit whereby we read, And now I commend you to God, placing you in his protective, loving care, and I command you to the want of his grace, the counsel and the promises of his unmerited favor. So we get the benefit here, which his grace is able to build you up and to give you the rightful inheritance. So the word of God builds. It builds people up. And as you grow, you will get the rightful inheritance. So every person, every believer, there is an inheritance which God has for them. Among all those who are sanctified, that is among those who are set apart from God's purpose, all believers. So actually, so the word of God will give us inheritance. It will build us up. So if you want to grow, you need to study the word of God. Just as that song says for the young kings that read your Bible, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. If you want to grow, if you want to grow, read your Bible and pray every day. And pray every day, pray every day. In your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. So in, in matters of God's kingdom, the word of God will bring growth to a person. Following that verse of the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 32, that the word of God gives us inheritance, it also builds us up. We can go to the book of John, chapter 17. John 17. Verses 17. Sanctify them in the truth. To sanctify you means to set them apart for your purposes. Make them holy. Your want is the truth. So the word of God is the one which sanctifies, which sets God's people apart for his work. That is where we need it. So the word of God sanctifies. Also, another benefit of the word of God, we can get it in the same book of John chapter Chapter 8, verses that uh, 2. The word of God gives us freedom. Or the word of God gives God's people freedom. The John chapter 8, that 2 says, And you will know the truth. This truth it is, of course, about salvation. And the truth you will set you free. And the freedom here, it is, it is from the penalty of sin. So once you know truth, that is the word of God, then this truth sets you free. Of course, you know the word of God is Jesus. So once you have the word of God, you have Jesus, you know that Christ died for you, then you don't have to continue in your sin, you believe in him through faith in his son Jesus Christ, then you are given the, the freedom. 
the freedom from the penalty of sin, the freedom from the power of sin. You are set free, and we thank God for the freedom which He gives us in His Word, as we have read from the book of John, chapter 8, verses 32. So we go also to the book of John, chapter 6, verses verses 63 it is the spirit which gives life so the other benefit we are seeing here is that the word of god gives life the flesh conveys no benefit it is of no account so the flesh here has to do with things which are not of god the ones i have spoken to you are a spirit and a life providing internal life so the word of god gives internal life to those who receive it so the word of God will give you and me eternal life when we receive it in faith through Christ Jesus. And of course we receive the Holy Spirit. In the same scripture, John chapter 6, verses, verses, verses 67. So Jesus said to the Torah, you do not want to live, to live you too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone are the ones of eternal life. You are our only hope. So you can see, the word of God also brings hope. Apart from eternal life, it brings hope. I repeat, John chapter 6, verse 68. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone are the ones of eternal life. You are our only hope. So the word of God gives eternal life, it then gives hope. And in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 3, John chapter 15, verses 3, we see also the word of God cleanses, it purifies, it takes away all the infirmity, it takes away all the filthiness from, from us. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you. The teachings which I have discussed with you. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples and he is telling them once they receive the teaching, once they receive the word of God, then they are clean. Actually, the more we hear the word of God, the more we know the word of God, the more even our thoughts and our soul will be cleansed, will be purified from the errors, from the lies of the enemy, from the, the opinions of people whom we have been hearing from the time we were born. So the more we dip ourselves in the word of God, the pure we become. Because the word of God is God himself. So, so far we have seen that the word of God uh, cleanses, it purifies. The word of God gives hope. The word of God gives internal life. The word of God sanctifies. The word of God will set you free. The word of God will give you freedom. The word of God will make you grow. The word of God will make you be built up. The word of God will make you have inheritance together with all those who are being sanctified. So let us desire to know the word of God. Let us desire to meditate upon the word of God so that it, we may get all these blessings. There are more blessings which we get from the word of God. And today I want us to end with the book of Psalms. Psalms 119. Psalms 119 verses 105. Psalms 119 verses 105. Which gives us another benefit of the word of God. This benefit is known by many. Your want is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Meaning that when you have the word of God, it guides you. It acts as a guidance. It acts as something to give you direction. So, mistake of this life and the regret are a minimum. Because where light is, where a lamp is, you are unlikely to fall. You are unlikely to fall into a pit in the case you are using the, the light which is the word of God. So, in brief, we have seen that the word of God is a, light, a lamp 
to somebody's feet and it is a light. The word of God cleanses, it purifies your thought, your soul, your spirit so that you can conform to your maker. The word of God gives freedom. When you have the word of God, you have Christ in you, you, have, you are free from the penalty of sin, you are free from errors. The word of God also sets you apart for God, for God to use you and for God to make you become that which he created you to be. The word of God also builds up. It will build you up. You will grow. And the word of God will give you an inheritance together with all who are being set apart. The word of God gives eternal life. The word of God will give you eternal life. And finally, the word of God will make you grow. So I pray that God will help us so that we may love his word. So that we may put his word into practice. So that we may stand it, the word of God every day and meditate upon it and put it into practice and through that god will see us through in jesus name thanks for watching kindly like subscribe and share and you are welcome to my youtube channel you can reach me at luke aaron that is my youtube channel name thank you